Bruins forward Brad Marchand is known league-wide as being one of the most irritating agitators in the NHL today, and his, well, sometimes interesting tactics are known to get under the skin of his opponents, helping Marchand often become public enemy number one. But Marchand is actually a solid offensive contributor, which makes him a valuable asset in more ways than one. As much as some hate to admit, in the NHL today, there's no player like Marchand, but when looking back throughout the NHL's deep history, the league's first real agitator is almost exactly comparable to Brad Marchand, except he took things to a whole nother level. This is Ken Linsman, the original Brad Marchand. I say this as when looking back at both of their actions on the ice and on the score sheet, there's no denying how similar both are to one another. But before we compare Linsman to Marchand, we need to look back on Linsman's career. As before he even stepped foot on NHL ice, he would become a controversial figure right away. While playing for the Kingston Canadiens during his junior career, Linsman would constantly make headlines. Back in the 70s, players would be considered junior players up until the age of 20. But with the new WHA still intact and Linsman getting selected by the Birmingham Bulls at the age of 19, Ken insisted he play for the Bulls instead of being forced to remain in juniors, going as far as taking junior hockey to court in order to do so. Surprisingly, he would win the case and is credited for changing the draft eligibility requirements, helping them become what we know them as today. But that that's not all. While Linsman was still in juniors, he would be charged with assault for kicking an opposing player in the head with his skate. Once arriving to the WHA, Linsman would produce at an impressive rate, scoring 76 points in 71 games, all while implementing his trash-talking, cheap, and dirty play along the way. Enter the Philadelphia Flyers, a team whose bad boy reputation helped earn them back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They took notice of the troublemaking forward, drafting him 7th overall in the 1978 NHL Draft. At just 5'11", he knew he couldn't check those bigger than him into the boards, so instead, he relied on his mouth and his stick to do most of the work. The Broad Street Bullies seemed like the perfect fit for Linsman, and once he would arrive during the 1980 season, he would be mentored by none other than the great Bobby Clark. So it seemed as if Linsman was being groomed to one day replace the star four. Forward. Throughout his entire career, Ken was always a solid offensive contributor, but he was also a pretty good skater. Despite lacking straight ahead speed, he was still extremely shifty, but was often hunched over when going down the ice. Clark would take notice of this, giving Ken the nickname The Rat due to the way he looked while skating. You know who else is nicknamed The Rat? Yeah, Brad Marchand. But back to Linsman for a moment, as his new nickname would become the perfect label for anyone who was as pesky as he was. And when older fans refer to Linsman, he's instantly known as the Rat. Once his nickname became popular, he, alongside Paul Holmgren and Brian Propp, would form one of the deadliest lines in hockey, the Rat Patrol. And although only staying intact for four seasons, they laid a beating on the opposition. Linsman's dirty and chippy play, combined with Holmgren and Propp's fists, created a line that would be feared league-wide, and a productive one at that, as in his second year in the league, Linsman would produce a 79-point season before topping that performance in the 81-82 season, producing a career-high 92 points. Kenny Linsman was becoming an impactful piece of the Flyers' offense, so it would be a complete shock to everyone when he would get traded in 1982 to Hartford, then immediately flip to the Edmonton Oilers. Oilers owner Peter Pop Rocklington had one goal in mind, to win a Stanley Cup within five years of entering the league, and the Ken Linsman trade would arguably be the deal that put them over the top. Why? Well, he would be placed on a line that just happened to feature two random Hall of Famers in Glenn Anderson and Mark Messier, and being placed on a team that had other heavyweights such as Dave Semenko, the addition of Linsman officially made Edmonton a team no one wanted to face. In 1983, Linsman would 
play a role in helping Edmonton reach their first ever Stanley Cup final, producing 14 points throughout the playoff run with a solid 75 point regular season. But the following year in 1984, when the Oilers would once again make the finals, Lindsman would play a much bigger role, still finishing with 14 points, but 10 of those points were goals, four of which included game winners, as he and the Oilers would win their first ever Stanley Cup. After winning it all, he would get shipped off again, this time to Boston, where although he began to lose some steam offensively, he still continued to aggravate his opponents. In fact, some of his most dirtiest moments would take place in a Bruins jersey, as he would spear Tomas Sandstrom between his legs. LaRouche winds it around. Penalty upcoming is Lindsman. That speared. Lindsman did. He got the stick. That is so the dumb. legs of Sandstrom. It's called hooking. I would also attempt to gouge Peter Svoboda's eye out. Taking a look at that, they're going to go. Well, you know, that's Lindsman. I try to be as neutral as I can. The first contact made was Svoboda with Lindsman, which I think came as the result. Lindsman bought in to the big bad Bruins persona the team was going by during the late 1980s and fit the style to a T. After his tenure with Boston came to an end in 1990, he would return to play one more year in both Philly and Edmonton before officially calling it a career in the 91-92 season. Lindsman was a hell of a player, but why is he the original Brad Marchand? Brad Marchand is one of the most productive players on the Bruins as of today, and both he and Lindsman have had many dirty moments. You can quite literally look up Brad Marchand dirty plays on YouTube, and there will be a ton of highlight compilations showcasing his nastiest moments. Both were irritatingly troublesome to play against due to their constant need to stir the pot. Marchand's antics included getting up close and personal, and Lindsman relied on running his mouth and taking matters into his own hands need be. Marchand also seems to have a problem keeping his feet to himself, as he's a known slew footer, but Lindsman seemed to use his stick as a weapon as much as possible. Just watch him get clobbered by King's Randy Holt, thanks to Ken trying to slam him with the nub of his stick. Icing waved off. Then, of course, there's the obvious ones, such as both players playing on the Bruins and having the same exact nickname, the Rat. But Marchand is known as a rat due to his antics, and as mentioned earlier, Lindsman got his nickname due to the way he looked, which I guess in a way also applies to Marchand as well. Both players are absolutely annoying to play against, but they're amazing to watch play for your team, as although they're the players that you love to hate, they were also able to provide playmaking, quick skating and chaos all in one night. In an old interview, Lindsman even goes on to praise Marshan for his play on the ice, stating, quote, there's a lot of similarities between us. I'd even say that Brad is a better player than I was. Both Brad and Ken are unique players, but what separates Lindsman apart from the rest was his ability to take everything a step further, making it a point to prove his point in any way possible. You always knew when he was on the ice, as whether he was lighting the lamp or causing trouble after the play, Ken Lindsman was his opponent's worst nightmare. They call him the rat. Look at this here. Ian Duncan, he gets a nice little spear and watch, he spits on him. <laughs> 